February 20. Oh, I think I'm going to repeat that. Um, so since you just started recording. OK, so it's, it's nine o'clock and um, I would like to call to order the meeting of February 23rd, 2022nd. At this time, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, thank you. Um, we have, uh, next we have items that are not on the agenda. At this point, uh, Janet will advise the public on how to, uh, how they may participate during, during the public comment. Janet. Uh, roll call? Yeah, first let's do roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, roll call. Uh, no Janet, can you do the roll call? Yes, please. Um, Commissioner Gupta? Here. Commissioner Hansen? Here. Commissioner Ketchum? Here. Chair, um, sorry, Chair Ramirez? Here. And staff are presented by Fox and uh, Monowitz and Mon. All right, there you go. Okay. So we'll next um, talk about public comment and how folks can participate during this time. Um, let me just let everybody know how this will work. For those attending the meeting on the Zoom video conference, we will use the raise hand feature in order to organize any public comments. During the general public comment period and for each item on the regular agenda, I will ask those members of the public who wish to comment to click the raised hand feature to raise your hand to speak on that agenda item. For those joining by phone, please press star nine to indicate your desire to speak. Please note that members of the public must wait for my prompt in connection with each agenda item before using the raised hand function. For example, you cannot raise your hand at the beginning of the meeting for an item that is later in the meeting. When you hear your name called, I'll prompt you to unmute your microphone and begin speaking. And for items not on the agenda, Chair, I don't see any hands raised at this time. Okay, uh, seeing that there, there's no one um, that wants to uh, participate uh, on the items not on the agenda, I will, uh, unless there's an objection from the commissioners, uh, I, I will uh, uh, step up public participation on that at this point. Um, and uh, then we can move on to the next item. Uh, we have a consent agenda. We have uh, item number one and number two. Uh, for item number one, we have uh, minutes for the, for the meetings of January 6th and February 9th. Um, and at this time, um, oh, and, and I'm sorry, and, and item number two, um, so that we can set our um, agenda here. Um, we have a resolution to make the findings that uh, as a result of the continued COVID-19 pandemic, a state of emergency declaration by Governor Newsom, a meeting in person for the meetings of the Planning Commission would present an an imminent risk uh, to the pop, to the health and the safety of attendees. So, do we have a? May I may I request that we postpone the minutes of February nine for further revision? Okay. Uh, sure. Yeah, we can do that. So, on that note, then, uh, will does anyone want to make a, a motion for the second part, item number two? Uh, I. I move that uh, that we approved uh, item two and and the revised minutes for January twenty six meeting. Second. Okay, we have a a, a motion and a second. Uh, Janet, can you do a roll call? Thank you, um, Commissioner Ketchum. Aye. Commissioner Hansen. Aye. Commissioner Gupta. Aye. Chair Ramirez. Aye. Thank you. Consent is approved. Okay. Uh, next, uh, we will move to the regular agenda. Uh, we are postponing item number three. So for for an undetermined uh, meeting in the future. Um, then we have uh, item number four. Janet, can you read that for the record? Sure, no problem. We have item number four, which is Kathleen 
I can't remember. Oh, sorry if I've messed up your last name or Winchester and Alexander Lee Rogers. Um, applicant Dennis Spiegel, file number PLN 2021-00029. Um, the location is 424 Summit Drive, Emerald Lake Hills. And our project planner this morning is Erica Adams. Erica. I, one moment, please. This is what I want to do. Okay. All right. Good morning, commissioners, members of the public. My name is Erin Holmes. I'm with the Planning and Building Department. I'll be presenting PLN 2021-0029. It is consideration of a design review permit and a non-conforming use permit and a grading permit to allow construction of a new 2,644 square foot two-story single family residence with an attached two-car garage on a non-conforming 6,205 square foot parcel at 434 Summit Drive in uh, the Emerald Lake Hills area of the county. The project includes construction of the house, removal of four trees, and a grading permit for 305 cubic yards. Um, <clears throat> there are three permits required for this project. Um, a non-conforming use permit is required to allow lot coverage of 28.25%, where 25% is the maximum floor area um, of 2,064, six, um, sorry, 644 square feet, where 2,400 square feet is the maximum and a combined side yard setback of approximately 16 feet where 20 foot is the minimum required in the residential hillside zoning area. Um, the zoning also includes design review and um, as I said, a grading permit is, is required. The house is located at 434 Summit Drive in the county's unincorporated Emerald Lake Hills area. The zoning is RHDR, Residential Hillside Design Review. As you can see, the subject parcel is smaller than surrounding parcels. And I have here a um, couple photos of the existing residents. It's the front of the house, and then that's the side with the garage in the back. This is a survey of the existing development on the parcel. And then here is the site plan of the proposed development on the parcel. Um, you can see the house, setbacks, um, and it's a little bit easier to see here with the, this, the landscape plan, but um, it's easy to see the encroachment on the sides there and the, the footprint of the house. And I'll go through the, um, the plans relatively quickly here. They have the floor plan of the first floor, which has the garage, living room, and um, just some kitchen and a guest bed, bed, bedroom. The upper area has decks and um, the bed, uh, additional bedrooms. It's the roof plan, a cross section of the house, and elevations. Um, the top elevation would be the right side elevation. This is the front elevation and then the rear elevation and then the left side elevation. The colors are light gray with um, some wood siding. And then to uh, go back, the, the project that we're looking at today requires three permits, the design review, non-conforming use permit and a grading permit. Uh, the first permit, that's just a, a reminder of what the site plan looks like. First permit would be the design review permit. Um, the project was heard at the July 6, 2021 uh, Emerald Lake Hills design review hearing and received a recommendation for approval. Um, with that recommendation, it was also a um, advice to the applicant that they make some modifications to better comply with zoning 
Um, the project was slightly revised. They reduced uh, 44 square feet and, and uh, corrected a, a height um, overage. The design review standards are um, in general here, what's here, and then the ones that were um, most relevant to the project would be that tree removal is minimized in, in that they are protecting the mature trees on the mature trees on the site. Um, the grading and the is is minimal and the topography is not really altered with the design, the colors and materials blend with the natural setting, and the roof is pitched. Um, the second permit is for the non-conforming use permit uh, to address areas where the project does not comply with the residential homes uh, hillside zoning district. Um, the, there are three nonconformities that are being addressed with this permit, um, the floor area, lot coverage, and the side setback combinations. So um, the, the nonconforming use permit findings are, um, they weren't in your staff report, but they're just like summarized here. And I'll start with the go over each one. Um, the first one is that the proposed development is proportioned with the size of the parcel. Uh, when we look at FAR, the um, considerations that we looked at in making the findings were that the minimum parcel size is 12,000 square feet in the RH zoning district. And that would allow us a 3,600 square foot house. Um, but the subject parcel is almost half that size, um, a little more than half that size, six at 6,204 square feet. And the zoning allows for the 2,400 square foot house. Um, when you look at these two considerations, it's just that the, the required parking eats up a lot more of the house than with um, a house that would be allowed on a conforming parcel. And then the other consideration was that the requested floor area is 244 square feet. And that was considered to be relatively small. The um, lot coverage is, is a similar situation where the parcel size is um, you know, about 50% of what is required. And then that the overage is 3.25% and that, that would equate to 196 square feet. And with the setbacks, the, the combined setback is approximately 16 feet where 20 feet is required. Um, but it, it's true that the, on both sides, the, the bare minimum, the seven and a half, which is required um, in that combination are being met on, on each side. So this, this shows uh, where the encroachment is on the setbacks. And then I have uh, photos. So on this, this is the left side. This is what you would see on the left side um, for um, where the, the house would encroach slightly in the setback. And then on the right side, um, because of the parcel shape, of the adjacent parcel, you just have a play area for that's there. Uh, moving on to some of the other non-conforming use permit findings, all opportunities of uh, to to buy additional land to make the parcel more conforming um, failed either because the adjacent parcels were developed and could not allow any additional land to be deducted from their, their um, the parcel. Some of them are substandard and then the parcel that is adjacent to them, uh, the owners denied a request to purchase additional land and that, that um, correspondence is in the staff report. Numbers or letter C, the proposed development is as nearly in conformance with the zoning regulations as currently, uh, regulations currently in effect and as reasonably possible. Um, for this, we, based on, you know, the discussion earlier about the request being relatively minor and the parcel size being half of what is normally required, um, we were made that finding um, that the, 
development will not be injurious to the community or um, or adjacent property owners. Um, there were no issues from the reviewing agencies, no coastal resources, and the design was determined to be compatible with the surrounding residences. And um, E, that the use permit approval does not constitute granting of a special privilege. We looked at the fact that um, we grant home improvement exceptions um, rather easily um, in the, you know, as, as um, a minor exception that homeowners can use to get um, up to 250 square feet of floor area. And this request is for 244 square feet. The, the design of the house um, is a little bit problematic for an addition. The design, it, it, the home improvement exceptions are only offered after um, you have actually built the house. But in this case, with based on this design, it is a little bit more problematic to do an addition to the house um, and, and maintain the same aesthetic that the applicants are trying to achieve. So because a home improvement exception is a relatively common um, solution for these kinds of overages, um, th the fact that it's being granted slightly earlier than uh, would normally be possible is not necessarily um, a, a, a privilege that other people cannot obtain. Okay, and then the last one would be um, conformity with the grading ordinance and the grading has been reviewed by um, Public Works and also our geotech um, staff and they have found that it complies with the grading ordinance. So the recommendation is that the Planning Commission approve the design review permit, non-conforming use permit, and grading permit for file number PLN 2021-0029 based on the subject um, and required findings and the conditions of approval in attachment A. So I will take any questions that you might have right now. Okay, um, commissioners, um, uh, do you have any questions, uh, Ms. Ketchum? That you're muted, you're muted. Thanks, uh, when was the, what's the date of the home improvement exception ordinance roughly? I don't know off the top of my head. Like, like back in the nineties or something, maybe? I, I um, okay. you know, I can look it up, but I don't know. No, no, that's, that's okay. Just. It, it comes up. That's okay. Just for my information. Thanks. No other questions. Uh, Mr. Hansen. Good morning, Erica. Um, I'm going to stumble through and you can help me because uh, I'm just trying to get some uh, something in my head, some context. So if and it's all a bit based on uh, SB 9. Um, if the owner wanted to take full advantage of everything that is offered in SB9, this would be smaller than that, correct? SB9 does not allow um, exceptions. Yes. So, so they, know, they, would still need, they would still, yeah, they would, if they were just using that directly, they would need to comply with the zoning. Okay, but they could put two units in and then two ADU units? Uh, I, I believe with the parcel split. Okay, but it could be done. I'm not saying this should be done or I'm just trying to understand the consequences of things with these. And is my assumption correct? I believe so. We have to look at every situation with SB9. So in principle, you could subdivide a parcel and do two units and two units. Okay. Is that, is that what your question is? Yeah. 
So um, with this proposed unit, um, there's still room for an ADU, right? Um, it, or, it, in, in theory, yes, they, they could have an ADU. Okay. SB9 or not, they could still have an ADU. They'll have an ADU. Right. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand the consequences of all this. Okay. Um, I don't think I have any other questions. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, Ms. Gupta? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Erica, I would like to commend you on the staff report and your presentation. I Thank think you. your pre presentation was uh, very organized and uh, highlighted the important things on this project. Uh, so uh, I think you explained it, but I, my question is um, like on page two of your staff report, it says that uh, uh, the staff asked the applicant uh, to modify the project uh, to comply with the zoning regulations. And so they submitted a revised plan. So what was changed? And this revised plan date was uh, December 7 of last year. So uh, could you kind of go over it again that what was, uh, what did they do in this revision? There, there was, they, they had not intended to be over height, but originally the project was over height. Uh, so that was corrected. And, and then by taking 44, they basically reduced the size of the garage. By, um, by doing that, then you would reduce both the, well, you reduce kind of all, um, and they also changed the front setback. Um, so the, originally the front setback did not comply. So the, the front setback complied with the change. And then by reducing the 44 square feet, you, you reduce a little bit the ask for the floor area and lot coverage. That's reduced a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so how big is the home? I couldn't get a good feel for how many bedrooms, how many? Uh, uh, I, think there, I, think, I think there were three bedrooms. There might've been four. Um, let me see. Honestly, I, yeah, I don't. It's, so yeah, got, there are so many drawings that uh, yeah there were a lot of drawings they have on the first floor they have a guest bedroom and then they have a master bedroom uh and so they have three bedrooms three bedrooms okay and uh often do you know what is the square footage of each story like uh First floor, second floor. Uh, um, I did not include. I didn't include in the. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I didn't print out a whole staff report here. So, um, on the the oh, so the 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 lot coverage number is the first floor because that's the footprint okay and then um you know the second floor has the deck so that doesn't count towards floor area and then the garage so that's it's about it looks like it's about um maybe 400 square feet uh, i mean sorry maybe 800 square feet less on the top floor. less on the top floor okay and did you say gar garage is not included in the total square foot. The garage is included. So the garage is, is included. 400 oh, square feet. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking at that table. Right. Uh, that's there. Um, okay. And one, one clarification from that table, in case uh, I think you had uh, some, um, some information about that even in your presentation. Uh, it says that maximum uh, building floor area is 2,400 square feet. 
Correct. And uh, is is that a given numbered in the regulations or how yes, is it? Yes, it is. So when a parcel is substandard in the RH zoning district, they guarantee that you can build a house at 2,400 square feet. Okay, okay. Because I was trying to see 30% didn't yeah, add the, 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 yeah, you are allowed to exceed the percentages. Okay, okay. Up to 2,400. So, so uh, up to 2,400 can be right. built? And if the lot is bigger, they can build a bigger one? Is that... Right. If you had if you had a twenty thousand square foot lot, then you get the full thirty percent. Full thirty percent. Okay. All right. Great. Um. Okay. So I have basically two more questions. One sure. is, one is, is this going to be a all electric home? Is that? Uh, Maybe the, the applicants are here. Maybe they can. I think with the new zoning, I don't, I, I mean, the new building regulations, I don't think they have a choice. That's okay. correct. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah. And is solar, uh, maybe this is also for the applicant about solar heating, because they may not have brought uh, that up yet. Yeah, you'd have to talk to the applicants about that. Okay. Okay. And uh, in attachment A, one of the conditions of approval it said that the work of any kind on the parcel can, can continue from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Monday through Friday. Isn't that kind of early to start and wake up all the neighborhood? Those are, that's, that's the county ordinance. So that's standard throughout the county. That, that's tied to the uh, environmental health noise ordinance. And those are the regulations for the county wide. So we just, we don't change those. So it, they can start as early as 7 a.m. Because, right. yeah, okay. I thought on the others, we didn't start that early, but I may be wrong, okay. And that is all I have. Thank you, Erica. You're welcome. All right, thanks, Erica. Um, and uh, thanks, Ms. Lunan, I mean, uh, Gupta. Um, does the applicant want to speak uh, on, on their project? Actually, Commissioner, um, Chair, I do see the applicant on the call. Let me go ahead and transfer him over. Yeah. Give me one second. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me here? Y yes, we can hear you. Perfect. I would also love to share my screen if I have access to that. Yeah, um, you can go ahead and do so at this point. Um, right, let me go ahead right, and take, you. actually, let me go ahead and take this off and then you can oh, yeah. go ahead and share your screen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, Dan, can we speak for one minute first? Yes, please go for it. Um, where's Kate? She should be doing the speaking here. Um, Kate, if you can hear me, can you join as a panelist? She's coming. Okay. Second. There you go. All right. Go ahead, Kate. Uh, she seems to be muted. Can she unmute herself? Hello. Good morning. Can you hear and see me? Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Go <laughs> good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kate Muscalane Rogers. My husband is on the line as well, Ben Muscalane Rogers. I'll be doing the talking for just one minute before I pass it on to Dan, who's our architect. Um, Erica, it's a pleasure to put a face to an email address, uh, and it's uh, it's great to see you all. We've been looking forward to today uh, for for a bit. Um, we moved into this house uh, in uh, September 2020 when we bought this property. We really uh, love the Emerald Hills area, and when we saw this house, we could just see the potential uh, of living here. 
and this house came with with uh, approved um, uh, house plans, and, and so that encouraged us to to look at what we can do, what the potential is for for a potential home for us as well. Um, we have, ever since we moved in, we have uh, connected with our neighbors around us on the left side, the right side and behind us. And when the plans pass through design review, we spend some time with them to walk them through the plans. And I believe one of the neighbors has uh, submitted a, a written, a positive written um, a report or, or support for the plans. And uh, we have received positive comments from uh, the Brill family on the left, um, the Ross family on the right, and then uh, Jay and Chantel uh, in the back as well. Um, we are, we, our dream was to build a modern, sustainable home. Um, and we have been working with Dan and his team for uh, quite some time now, and we're very pleased with what they have done uh, to build a home that really fits in the neighborhood um, that is full of nature and, uh, and, and greens. So with, uh, without further ado, I want to pass it on to Dan, who's going to walk you through a lot more details of, about the house, but we are very excited about it. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk today. Sure, thank you. All right, good morning. And thanks for the opportunity to present here. I'm Dan Spiegel, I'm one of the principals of SAW and we're the architects and landscape architects for this project. And we've been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to work with Ben and Kate on the design of their new home over the last year and a half. The 434 Summit site is an interesting lot. It's tucked into this curving street here with gradual topography that affords long views towards the back of the property over in this direction. Um, but it's also considerably unusually constrained. Um, it's a smaller lot than most of the ones adjacent to it. And this has consequences based on the you know, normal ways in which FAR is calculated. As you can see, each of the adjacent lots are significantly bigger, despite oftentimes having similar street frontages. Um, and each of the properties uh, on all sides around are allowed to build substantially more square footage than um, what is being requested within even this exception um, for this project proposal. Uh, as Kate uh, <coughs> mentioned as well, there was a previously approved set of plans for an expansion of the existing house that was in fact bigger than the uh, exception that we are uh, requesting at this point here. Um, as Kate mentioned too, they've been quite attached to this neighborhood and we've drawn from a number of examples of neighborhood architecture in the broader region as well, but adapting it to make it particular to this lot and to Ben and Kate in their um, lives. These are some photos of the existing residence. As you can see towards the rear, there's a bit of a slope down um, and there's currently um, a slightly non-conforming accessory garage structure in the rear that would be removed as a part of this project. So uh, while accessories are allowed different setback uh, requirements than main structures, the overall sort of conformance within the idea of what the zoning envelope might be um, is actually you know, significantly improved. Um, here are some photographs along the street front as you're familiar with. One of the other things that is unusual about the site here, as you can see, is that the property line is in fact set back fairly significantly from the street front as well. This is not always the case on uh, all the houses around. And so uh, by meeting this 20 foot front setback, um, we're actually uh, set back further from the street than what might be indicated. The idea of the house is around this kind of integration of the interior and the exterior and about making a silhouette, a profile of a house that would be narrowed from the front of the street and impact the neighbor's views minimally. So on the one hand, we are asking for a slightly larger house, but on the other hand, we're trying to present a house that, that behaves as though it's smaller, that the profile is cut back from the front and from the back to minimally impact the neighbors. And in the area over here where you can see uh, the setback exists, the, the um, setback encroachment would exist. Uh, that's the lowest portion of this house and it's also pulled furthest away from the neighboring house as well, so as to mitigate the, the risks. It's organized around a series of private spaces that are uh, on the second level and then public spaces in the ground floor and then this courtyard in the middle that ties everything together through this integration with the, uh, with the outdoors, with nature, with the landscape. And that just house is really about a kind of profile of sustainability and integration with the kind of California climate. 
It's also oriented in a way in which responds to the kind of irregular shapes of the plot, as well as taking advantage of uh, the orientation of sun and natural light, uh, moving out of the way of large existing trees and also trying to harness some of these views towards the back. So again, the, uh, some different images of the approach of the house. This again is the existing house that's set back from the street. And then in plan, the existing main house to be removed. This is that garage structure that's tucked way towards the back of the property line and over towards the side setback. And you'll find that there's also a slight encroachment uh, in the existing residence towards this property line over here. Um, an overlay of the proposed and the existing uh, house. This here is the driveway. Uh, the overall paved area is being significantly reduced because it used to be that a driveway would take you all the way back to the garage and back. And now uh, that area can be used for landscaping and other things like this. Um, these are these large uh, protected trees towards the back that we're trying to uh, organize the house to stay out of the way of and in fact to celebrate. Uh, a few smaller trees are being removed, which are in poor health and with the sort of blessing of the arborists uh, and some additional ones will be planted in their stead. So in the existing house, this is technically an accessory structure, so it's not true nonconformance. The garage back here, but you can see that the side setbacks are actually uh, also not in conformance in the existing case. And so we're not asking for a greater nonconformity that currently exists. And then the, the main pressure on this setback here, as Erica mentioned, we did push back the front to meet a, a, a planning staff's request to meet the front uh, setback. The main nonconformance here is that we don't have much flexibility in reshaping the garage. There are minimum size standards that need to be met and we're organizing the front of the house towards the front of the street. And that puts a little bit of pressure on this corner to slightly flare out. Uh, but as viewed from the front profile of the street and house, everything would appear to be within the setback as it lays at the front. Um, so the first floor is uh, a little under 1300 square feet of living area, 1733 with the garage. And it's meant to be a series of spaces that are organized around these exterior courtyards. So each of these living spaces has windows out uh, on multiple sides to the exterior while still maintaining privacy um, for both the neighbors and for Ben and Kate within their home. The upstairs is a relatively compact floor plan. There's a bedroom on one side, the master bedroom, and then a guest bedroom over towards the other side. Um, they're organized to be looking out in this kind of long direction here, again, protecting um, privacy all around. As you can see, the kind of proposed massing steps up so that um, rather than creating like a large unified wall at the front of the property line, we're trying to stay low and stay low in the direction of the view so that from the street, um, you know, the entirety of the kind of like expanse of this neighborhood and the hills around is not you know, deprived from the passerby. Uh, we've also sort of nestled the kind of two-story mass up towards that uh, backyard effectively that's because of the irregularity of the site layout over here um, and have the tallest portion of the house responding to the tallest part of the part of the topography. Um, these are the elevations. This is the courtyard in the middle here. So the, again, the tallest part is then set way back from this other portion of the um, neighboring house. We're using the kind of tapering of the roof lines in order to kind of break the mass down further and respond to opportunities for light and air. Um, and then using uh, additional landscape screening to, uh, to uh, nestle this kind of volume into the hillside and make it you know, a, a part of the uh, natural landscape and topography. The existing hardscape on the site is 2,600 square feet. Proposed is less than half of that, 1,305. And then additional features of this kind of pitched roof that falls down and drawing from uh, contextual materials. The entry sequence with the kind of natural warm woods that will weather and then, you know, this even from the front door view towards the exterior all the way through the house. Courtyards that the primary living spaces are organized around. And then the living room, dining room that opens on both sides of the landscape.
from the backyard as the topography steps up and then sort of vacating the site as it moves down towards the back, following the building mass kind of following with the natural topography of the site. And then the way in which it screens behind these large oak trees from the properties behind, sort of minimizing any sort of visual impact, especially uh, in relation to the, the general and typical volume and mass of adjacent homes. Uh, the material profile is meant to kind of weather naturally, be sustainable, and to be contextual within the neighborhood. And then landscaping as well, using natives and uh, additional trees to, um, to pick up where the ones that are being removed in, in fair and poor condition. This is one for removal. Again, these will be replaced. And then, you know, we've noted similar, um, you know more about this than we do, but we've noted similar sort of exceptions granted in the past for various reasons. This one seemed important. And while we know that it's not legally binding because it is a different project proposal, this was for a renovation of the existing subject property, but this was the exception that was previously approved as one of those homeowner or home improvement exemptions uh, in the past for the subject parcel, um, which is, uh, fairly significantly bigger than what we're proposing with the new construction here. And you can see from the front, the sort of massiveness of the previously approved proposal versus the kind of sculpted down um, volume mass profile of the proposal. That is it, thank you. I'd be happy to take any questions. That you might have. Sure, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Um, do commissioners have uh, questions for the applicant or the owner? Uh, Commissioner Gupta. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I have a couple of questions primarily. Uh, one was uh, about um, uh, the sol solar heating. Are there plans of using solar heating? Is that conducive to getting sun there? Yes, so we do have good access for solar and we will be using solar electric, solar PV. Um, there is a transition away from gas, as you all know at this point, and um, there's a real ambition for Ben and Kate uh, to make this as sustainable a property as possible. And the thing we're leaning towards now is using solar with an air to water heat pump so that uh, we can use um, radiant hydronic um, throughout the house and power it as much as possible through solar or electric. Great, great. And um, do the owners intend to live in this home or is this uh, for uh, selling? Um, no, we intend to live there for sure. We love it here. Okay, okay. great, great. Looks like a good design, uh, very contemporary. Uh, are the neighboring homes also contemporary styling in style? I would the, not say so. Dan, do you yeah, know? the immediately adjacent neighbors are not. They're the sort of kind of a variety of different sort of like Northern California vernaculars. There are some homes of this sort of style within the neighborhood. We are trying to do a kind of combination where it is contemporary in many ways, but also kind of references the pitched roofs and the sort of vernacular forms from even farmhouses that have, you know, thought of this landscape since mid 1800s, basically. There's a William Worcester house that we were really interested in. It's the Gregory farmhouse, not too far from here, that actually has a very similar profile in many ways. It's kind of low sort of gated wall and then uh, a sort of miniature vertical tower type thing at the front, which is, uh, you know, one of the kind of like best of the kind of vernacular conditions. Okay. Um, there was one more question. I'm just looking at my notes here. Um, I'll, I'll come back to it. I can't find my other question. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, thank you, Ms. Gupta. Uh, Commissioner H Hansen? I have no questions. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Gupta, uh, Ketchum? No questions for me, thanks. 
Okay, um, I don't have any questions at this moment. Um, I think uh, now we can open the, the to public participation. Um, Janet, can you allow people to come in? Hi, thank you, yes. Um, we're now opening public comment for item number four. If your hand is raised, your name will be called. Um, right now, I only see two people on the attendee side. And so if uh, you wanna speak on this item, please go ahead and raise your hand. Um, and so I don't see any hands raised, Chair. You can proceed. Okay, so seeing that we don't have uh, any uh, buddy from the public wanting to participate uh, on this item, um, I will move uh, to close uh, public participation. Um, uh, so, Chair, um, yeah. I just just uh, found my question. Um, yeah, no problem. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah okay. we can do we okay. can do it now. So anyway, at this time, public participation is now closed. Uh, go, go ahead, Ms. Gupta. Uh, okay, so the question uh, I had was, um, uh, as part of the um, tree replacement, it had, um, you, uh, there were plans to plant four trees, four 15 gallon trees. And it said that, Two will be oak. Uh, any in information about what the other two will be? That is a good question. I, I do believe we have a proposal of it somewhere in the drawings. I don't have it top of mind. I think um, there is some development of that to be determined still. Um, okay. But. Um, you know, just curiosity more than anything else. Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. That that is all I have. Thank you. If I may, uh, um, what we're uh, considering, uh, Dan, is is more on the fruit trees side, Ms. Gupta. Okay. Okay. But all right. We have not Great selected idea. Yet. <laughs> okay. Thank all you. right. Uh, if there are no more uh, questions for the. Um, the applicant or um, the staff, um, I would like to consider that we do our del uh, our deliberation at this uh, time. I will call on Commissioner Hansen. Yeah, I, I like the design. I like how, you know, most of the lots are deeper in this neighborhood, but the houses that are sitting uh, right up front, you know, don't look, uh, look either bigger or within context. So I like how this house sits within it. I like the orientation. I, uh, I think a lot of positives going with it. I don't see the ex exceptions being, you know, true exceptions. You know, the, um, they are within the noise level for me. I, I, I see. Uh, unless someone can point something out to me, uh, why I would, I'm in support of this. Great, uh, Commissioner Ketchum. Uh, I think it looks like a creative, well thought out design. It would be an asset to the neighborhood. Great, um, Commissioner Gupta. Um, I I like the design, and I'm very uh, happy about the owners uh, considering the privacy of the neighbors, um, not trying to block their sunlight or, or topology of the lot. Uh, it looks like a good design to me. I'm in support of that. Uh, great, thank you. Um, I too uh, like the design. I think you guys have taken um, you know, a good amount of time to think it through. I'm well aware of uh, the neighborhood. I built some houses in the area myself. Um, so I, I am well aware of what's in general in the neighborhood. I think this will definitely be a good addition. Um, and I know there were some concerns from, from some of the neighbors uh, as far as the, the height, the massing, um, but, you know, I think we, we allowed a bigger house before to, to be uh, 
put on that lot before. So it's great that you actually spend the time to actually reduce it uh, and, and make it fit into the environment. So with that, um, I am uh, in favor of this uh, project. So I will uh, uh, consider a motion for this item at this point. May I make a motion? Yes, please. I move that we approve the design review permit, non-conforming use permit, and grading permit for county file number PLN 2021-00029 based on and subject to the required findings and conditions of approval listed in attachment A of the staff report. I will second that. We have a motion and second. Uh, Janet, can you do the roll call, please? Sure. Commissioner Gupta? You're muted. Uh, Ms. Gupta, you're muted. Aye. Commissioner Ketchum? Aye. Commissioner Hansen? Aye. Chair Ramirez? Aye. Thank you, motion passes. All right, uh, congratulations. Uh, your project is approved. Uh, so motion uh, passes uh, four to zero. So congratulations. Thank you. So, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So we can move on to our next item, which is uh, correspondence and other matters. Yes, good morning, Chairman Ramirez and commissioners. Um, the only correspondence to report is the one that you considered in relation to item four. So uh, no other correspondence to report today. All right, a consideration of study session for next meeting. Yes, um, so, Last meeting, uh, Commissioner Ketchum asked about the long range work program. Um, we're not able to pull it together for next meeting, but we are planning on bringing it uh, to the commission for the second meeting in March. So I look forward to having a study session with you at that time. But uh, as far as next meeting goes, no study session recommended. Uh, we have two items currently on the agenda, one being the uh, after the fact approval of the domestic well that was continued from today's agenda mm -hmm. and also a new single family residence in Miramar. Uh, great. Uh, do we move to item number seven, director's report? Certainly. Um, so the only thing I have to report to you today is that um, yesterday we received an appeal of the um, Planning Commission's decision to deny the off-leash dog pilot project. Uh, the Department of Parks and Recreation filed the appeal indicating their desire to pursue um, approval of a permit for a quarry park only. So they um, understood the commissioner's concerns regarding uh, use at Pillar Point um, and um, are going to be seeking the board's authorization to amend the pilot project to be for Quarry Park only and to also ask for their approval of the coastal development permit. So um, be happy to answer any questions the commissioners may have about that or anything else. Um, the commissioners have questions on that. Anybody? Uh, no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so what are they going to have to go through for this uh, off-leash dog uh, pilot program? Yes, yeah, so um, as you recall, the Board of Supervisors authorized and directed parks to pursue uh, off-leash, uh, the permits required for the off-leash dog pilot program, and they right. directed parks to um, pursue those permits for both Quarry Park and um, the yeah. Pillar Point Bluffs. And um, based on the Planning Commission's decision to deny a permit for both parks, um, they've submitted an appeal to the board, which basically um, stays the Planning Commission's decision on the permit applications. And um, the Board of Supervisors will conduct a public hearing on the application and on the Parks Department request to amend the pilot program to be for Quarry Park only. So um, that, that will be a forthcoming public hearing um, 
the date still to be determined. Um, and at that time, the board will make the decision on the coastal development permit. The board's decision on that permit will be appealable to the California Coastal Commission as well. So um, like many actions of the Planning Commission, this is an appealable action. And in cases when appeals are filed, which simply involves submitting an appeal form with your um, basis for your appeal and the uh, appeal fee, then we, uh, the, the matter scheduled for board consideration and the board makes the final decision, um, final unless it's appealable to the Coastal Commission, of course. And then if someone wants to take it one step further, um, that process is available. Great. Um, okay. Thank you. We, so next we have uh, commissioners updates and uh, other questions, uh, other stuff. Uh, any, anybody? Raise your hand and I'll let you. Okay, um, seeing that we don't have any more questions, uh, I'm gonna say that this meeting is adjourned. So. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody you have a good day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.